We're back to the Told Education Celebrity Show on the Told Education Network. Again, toldtutor.net for more information. Twitter, Told Tutor, Neil S. Haley, Facebook, LinkedIn, Neil Haley, Instagram, Total Tutor. And, and uh, also Pinterest, Neil Haley. And I'm excited to welcome the program from the real world Portland and uh, uh, MTV's Marlon Williams. Marlon, thanks for calling. How are you? I'm doing good, man. I'm just living, you know, taking it one day at a time. It seems like you're taking it one day at a time. you got a lot of projects coming up, which we'll talk about for sure, Marlon. But first, the real quick, I guess not 100 sound bites on this, but more about talking about the experience on the real world and how it's changed your life after that experience. Kind of explain to me, uh, you know, what you thought the whole experience being on the show was and how did your life change from that? I mean, I think, I think, like, real world's a good, like, look in the mirror. You know what I mean? Like, you get to, like, really kind of, you know what I'm saying, see who you are as a person from everybody else's view. You know what I mean? So I, I think that's just, like, a blessing because, you know, a lot of people don't get that chance to be, be like, you know, I want to change this about myself or I want to be more like this. But, like, now I have a documented black and white in history forever view of, you know what I'm saying, like, who I am or what people perceive. So I think it's a blessing in that. And then, you know, it opened doors, you know, so like now I'm, you know, a celebrity. So when I go to talk to people, they take me seriously because they're like, you know, you've got some form of success that, you know, millions don't have. So um, it definitely opened those doors and, and, and it just, you know, it's just a great experience. I mean, you can't you can't do anything like that on your own. And it's just an eye opening. It, it sounds like it, and so it's it's a door opener. So once the show airs, tell me specifically what happens to you walking down the streets after that happened. The wrecking people recognize oh, man. you. It, it was a it was a dude. It's crazy. Yeah, man, it's crazy, man. Like you be. I mean, I'm like back in Lubbock where I played football at, right? So I'm just thinking, you know, I'm gonna just go back and 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 just go to the normal bars I go to and just kick it and chill. I mean, like, I can't even get to the door without it being, like, you know, 10, 5 people, like, just like, dude, you the guy from MTV, bro, what's up? You know what I mean? Like, I got history here, so it's just, like, all these people just vibe with it because not a lot of people make it out of love it, like, on that level. So, like, people just want to talk to you. They want to take pictures with you. They want your autograph. <laughs> so, like, it, it's crazy, man. It's crazy. It's like that overnight buzz you that you get from it. It's crazy. Exactly. And so, um, like, I'm I'm looking to try to do a, a reality show on, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a tutor and teacher, and with the radio thing, I, I, my family of five kids, I'm looking to try to, to do a spin deal on that stuff, and I've been talking to people, and, and, and I, get, I know how your life would absolutely change after that if it got picked up by the right thing, especially MTV, and how many people saw you. I have friends that are in reality shows. One is Mary Ammons and, from the Real Housewives D and she said from that opportunity the p- producers did not prepare us and we really didn't know how to capitalize through the experiences did you have people marlin kind of coaching you in this way saying you know this is what's going to happen to you after this airs and how you can capitalize so that you can help grow your overall brand and keep it going not just through the real world did it, did anyone were there people offering Man, advice on that? hell no <laughs> hell no they put you on a plane, drunk you off in the house, and said, good luck, pretty much. Then when you got done with filming, they put you on the plane, sent you back home, and told you, good luck. That was it. Like, everything everything I had to pretty much do on my own and teach myself. You know, you know what I mean? Like, how to work the social networks, how to talk to people, how to get bites on different things that you're doing. It's been just like a trial and everything. But, um, you know, as far as them... You know, being hands on or 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 being supportive of what what you do outside of real world, nah, man, nah. They just pretty much give you a pat on the back and say, "Hey, man, good luck. I like what you're doing. Keep it up." And that's it. So, but, you know, how many people were ringing off off your off the your phone were in off the hook with people saying they want to represent you, agents, things like that. That stuff came through after the deal, kind of. In a way, yeah, man. Like I got a lot of, I got like a lot of modeling deals. Like a lot of people wanted me to do like sports modeling and then um, music because you know I do music, so I got a lot of bites on the music. But I mean, it wasn't the deals weren't right. You know what I mean? It was it wasn't something that I could see being long term. So I mean, I just had to turn them down because it was like I don't want to get locked into a deal with these people, and then something bigger comes up, and then it's like, well. 
you know, I got this contract and you wait, you know, eight months when this is up type stuff. So the phone did ring, though. Like, it's crazy. Like, I mean, people were getting my numbers that I don't even know how they got my number. And I even changed my number uh, after I got done with the real world. So, like, I was, it was just shocking to see how, like, quick people can just hit you up and get in contact with you. Because they would talk to a, someone who might have known you before you made it big time, and they gave out your number, and then before you know it, it's uh, it's uh, going the whole thing. And you probably dealt with some paparazzi as well during that deal too, right? I mean, a little bit, man. It was more like spur of the moment stuff. Like people would be at a certain, like I would, you know, just pop into a certain bar, and there would already be kind of an event going on, and then be like, oh man, you know. Wanting from MTV to but we gotta get some pictures. So then you know it's like a photo op. You know what I mean? But it, 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 it's all love, man. Like I feel like you gotta help everybody with their own hustle. You know what I mean? Because I didn't get here without favors. I didn't get here without you know what I'm saying somebody taking a chance on me. So I always feel like if I'm out and about and somebody wants me to listen to their music, take a picture or or look at their whatever. Like I, I feel like it, out of respect that they, you know, are excited about what I'm doing, you got to give them that 30 seconds, two minutes, five-minute talk. You know what I mean? Exactly. So let's go from that uh, situation to some of the your projects. One is your new clothing line. Tell us a little about that. Bruh, young and wavy, man. Like, it's, it's dope, yo. It's young and wavy. It's T-shirts, tank top, V-necks. Like, it's graphic design. I do everything on my own. I design all the shirts. Um, and it's just my movement. Like right now I'm trying to start this young and wavy movement, which is just like people just accepting like who they are and loving who they are. You know what I mean? Like I feel like too many times people try to aspire to be like these celebrities and all these rich people. And it's just like, that's not your life. So if your life doesn't amount to that, that don't mean you're not cool. It doesn't mean that you're not, you know what I'm saying? Something special. So young and wavy is just like, the identity of do it on your own, make it your own way, and then everything else falls in place. And that's kind of what I'm building with the clothing line. It's just like that just wild go-after-it mentality, and you can do it. You know what I mean? So It, it seems like it, for sure. It's like, you know, whatever, yeah. you, what, whatever you're about. So let's give me some fashion advice, okay? I'm, an, I'm, I'm 41 years old, okay, former professional wrestler, uh, five kids, and now I'm kind of getting, you know, old in certain aspects. And But being 6'10", it's hard to find, you know, good clothes. So what? how would you outfit me? I'm about 280 pounds. Give me a, give me a thought all process. Right, all right. So like, with you being taller, man, you got to look at more at layers. Layers, layers are going to help you out. You know what I mean? So, like, you can do, like, the cardigan with the nice V-neck under it, right? But then you work, you roll the sleeves up because you probably got long arms. And then you do, like, the rolled-up sleeves or, like, the pulled-up sleeves and then, like, a nice little wrist jewelry. So, like, a bracelet, a nice watch, something simple, but, you know, to the point. Then jean-wise, you want, you know, a jean that's, like, the proper length. You don't want all the extra baggy at the bottom. But a nice, just solid color jean, like a like the maroon color, uh, like the five hundred one jean. Um, and then shoes wise, you know what I'm saying? If you're taller, it looks better when you have like that casual polo shoe or like a dress shoe. And then um, you know, from there you can you know add a couple accessories, like a nice little uh, like the smaller necklace or like a uh, you know decent hat. And then that helps kind of slim you down a little bit, and then it kind of lets the you know fact that you're taller, it lets people see that presence more. And I mean that that would be a good. I think that would be a good look for a taller guy. You know what I mean? It sounds like it. Hey, I, I need you to definitely if I can if I make it big time at one point, either through the radio or the other, and I need it for red carpets and stuff. I need to tweet you out and say, "Come on, Marlon, you gotta help me out for sure." Now the other thing we could just see, Marlon, that uh, the music is something that just really makes you. Uh, it's 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 one of your passions, right? Tell us a little about the music and stuff you're doing. Man, bro, music has been day one since like seventh grade, man. I got my like, I got my first little record deal in seventh grade, and that's oh, when okay. I just fell in love. Like, yeah, bro, like walking into the studio and they're like, all right, man, here's the mic, here's the board, like go to work. Like since seventh grade, it's just been my thing. Like I want to do music. Um, so like after real world, it was just kind of like I got to continue doing it. So like right now, I'm working on my Black Gatsby album, um, which should be dropping like late May, early June. Um, and it's going to have like 13 cuts and it's just really talking about my life where I'm at now. So it's like the success, the ups, the down, 
you know, the family, the the, the party and all that in one album. So that's my big major project right now. So Black Gap, the album, make sure y'all go get that. It's going to be fire for sure. And it's it's fantastic again that you uh, were able to get a uh, a record label because I bet you it was more difficult with your talent before till the real world right that really has helped you in a way to get recognized more to, to for people to want oh uh, yeah want your music and was that one of the reasons yeah, of I mean, doing I'm a the real world name now. exactly so that? is is that why you wanted to do the real world is that one to to kind of get your stage. For yourself and to get you. Nah, man. Like honestly, like when I was doing my like, you know how you got to do like all the interviews and stuff. I had told them I did music, but I was like, I don't, I'm not really like looking to make music a big part of it. So I just want to go experience, you know, the moment. Um, but like after I got there, you know, I was doing like little freestyles here and there, and then uh, I linked up with this one guy out there, Infinite Rats. Um, and he was making beats, and then they were like, "Look, we think you got something." So you know. And we put your music on the show, and I was like, "Well, if y'all think, yeah, yeah, go ahead." So it was really more, more. It was really more of just an opportunity that they were like, "We think you could go somewhere, so you know, we can throw you a bone if you like." So I took it. You know, like you don't pass up opportunity like that. But at first, I wasn't even going to make music a part of of the show at all. So are you are you hoping also to act? Because you seem like Marlon, you could be a good actor. You could you you're, you're an entertaining guy. So do you I want to add re- acting to your repertoire at one point? Oh, man, bro. I want to do it all, bro. Acting, <laughs> I definitely want to get do it. Like, you understand, I'm like the like renaissance man. I want to do it all. I want to be great at everything. So, I mean, I definitely see acting in my future. I think, you know, I don't want to put too much on the plate right now. So right now I'm just really focusing so, on the music and the calling line. And then acting, for sure. I can definitely do some acting. And when you were talking about off-air with me, a different uh, – uh, rap artists that you would like to that you kind of because you brought up I'm from Pittsburgh and and things like that do you would do you uh, now especially on the airwaves right now who would you like to do an album with someday what uh, what uh, what music star oh uh, man hands down like no question Kendrick Lamar and Kanye West those two right there just I feel like a music music genius like you know what I mean Kendrick Lamar really changed the concept of rap from the money, cars, clothes, and all that, you know, BS. And then Kanye, like, is the master at reinventing himself. Like, every album he puts out is just something completely different. So, like, those two artists, I would just like to get in the booth with them and pick their mind of, like, you know, how do you do this? Like, what do you look at? What do you listen to? How do you write this? Like, you know what I mean? Those two people, I think, would be... If I made a track with them, I would be like, I'm done. I've I've accomplished everything in life. (laughs) you guys I'm going on. <laughs> All right. Well, fantastic. It was great talking to you, Marlon. And honestly, I see you as possibly coming back on a regular basis. I really want to go dig deep into the MTV experience. So you're you're definitely invited back next month to come on and talk about more about the MTV experience, more of just reality television in all ways. And then you, through that process, you can continue to promote what's going on with you. So uh, you're definitely welcome to come back. You're cool to talk to. And I appreciate you calling. So where can we find information on you, Marlon, and find out more about you? Man, the best spot is my, my official blog, wavysquad.com. Um, it has all my free download music. It'll have my album. Um, it has my link to my clothing line. So wavysquad.com. Join Young and Wavy and be a part of the movement, man. Let's get it popping. All right, so let's definitely uh, touch base and have you back on again to talk about more of the experiences, man. If you're interested, definitely uh, we'll hook up, okay? Yeah, man, most definitely, man. Anytime, man. Just hit, you know, hit my PR lady and we'll get it popping for sure. All right. All right, sounds good, Marling. Take care now. Thanks again for calling. All right, man, thank you. All right, take care. You're listening to the Toll Education Celebrity Show on the Toll Education Network, and we'll be back in just a moment.